My name is Edgar Schwery, and I'm a professor of mechanical and aerospace engineering here at Princeton University. Recently, I've been involved academically in acoustics. 3D sound is for you to sit in front of some speakers, ideally two loudspeakers only, and be able to play an orchestra or an ensemble or a band and be able to locate unambiguously the location of each sound source. If you have a choir, you can point to every person in the choir. If you have a symphony orchestra, you can see the, you know, the viola coming from here, the bass coming all the way from the right. In other words, a 3D audio image of that event. Quite often people ask me, how is that different from surround sound? Surround sound uh, is just a way to get you enveloped with sound, which works fine if you're watching an action movie with a lot of explosions around you. It doesn't attempt to reconstruct a 3D audio image. For example, if you want to portray somebody walking to the listener and whispering in your ear, you can never do that with surround sound because the sound is always at the speakers. Uh, but with 3D audio, I can get a fly to circle your head from two loudspeakers. The first goal of my work in this lab is to fundamentally understand how humans locate sound in 3D. If you are in a concert hall and somebody makes a sound from the right part of the concert hall, even if your eyes are closed, you can tell that that person is standing all the way to the right-hand side. Your brain can tell because it receives three kinds of cues. The first kind of cue is simply the time it takes for the sound to get to your right ear is slightly shorter than the time it takes for the sound to reach your left ear. That time difference between the two ears is enough for the brain to analyze very quickly and uh, realize that the sound must be coming from the right and not from the left. The second kind of cue is the sound as it travels from the source. When it hits your right ear, it has a certain level. By the time it hits your left ear, it has a lower level so to record in 3D for loudspeakers, all we need is two microphones. If the microphones are placed inside the ears of a dummy head, the microphones will record the correct 3D cues needed for humans to hear in 3D. The trick is in the playback. The reason you don't hear in 3D through normal speakers is that the left speaker contains the 3D cues for your left ear and the right speaker for your right ear. But these cues get corrupted when your left ear hears the right speaker and your right ear hears the left speaker. This is called crosstalk. And without canceling the crosstalk, the cues get mixed up and your brain won't get the information it needs to hear in 3D. You need now to take what's on the right channel, make it go to the right ear, and the left channel, make it arrive to the left ear. Essentially putting a wall between the two speakers by sending negative and positive pressure waves from each speaker. My filter does that so that the left speaker sound never reaches the right ear and vice versa. Previously, any attempt to do crosstalk cancellation, which is the technique I'm talking about, resulted in strongly coloring the sound to a point where you would not accept it as tonally correct. Any listener would just realize that's not a piano anymore, it sounds like something else. What's unique about the project is being able to design filters that not only give your brain cues that it needs to hear in 3D, but to do it with that coloration to the sound. The technique has many applications. 3D TV, which is now a big development activity, and a lot of companies are trying to push 3D TV. And as you've noticed, there's a lot of 3D movies coming out. The image is pretty good. The audio is lousy. At best, it's surround, and it's not, it doesn't give you a sense of depth. In principle, this kind of filter can be an ideal complement for a 3D image. Virtual reality, monitoring 3D sound fields for security concerns. 3D audio in your car is a creative tool for composers. Hearing aids that allow people to localize sound better. If you have a differential hearing, you have a hard time localizing sound very clearly. So imagine an elderly crossing the street, there's a truck coming from here, and they're looking from the other direction. It can lead to a horrible situation. One of my goals is to improve the ability of people to localize sound through better hearing aids teleconferencing. You'll be at that meeting. You can tell where everybody is. Howdy, Lucas. I'm Matthew. I'm a first-year graduate student here at Princeton. Oh, you should spend a um, graduate student who work on plasma heating using electrostatic waves. Hi, this is Ben Tai. I'm a senior and I'm working on the Thera thruster. Hi, Lucas. I'm Justin. I'm a PhD student at Princeton and I'm working on plasma detachment from uh, hey Lucas, it's uh, Christian. Um, I'm working with Dan Love here. Hey, this is Buddy. I'm a senior here at Princeton and I'm working with Ben on the Beating Waves experiment. I've always been interested in sound. I'm a bit of a frustrated musician. I love music. I bang on the guitar a little bit and the piano, but I will not subject anybody to it. 
I have sketches from when I was in high school of my attempt to create 3D sound, putting thousands of speakers around the walls. For many years, I've been an amateur musical recordist, and the hobby evolved into an investigation into 3D audio. And now, it's not anymore a hobby. I have a laboratory at the university where we are right now. Project X Foundation, headed by Lynn Shostak, allowed me to do exactly that. A great opportunity for scholars who want to do something outside the box or outside their expertise, who have enough interesting ideas that warrant further research. I'm very excited about helping its evolution. The idea of using technology to recreate reality is something that excites me and I think excites many scientists and engineers around the world. This is one of the goals of technology, to mimic nature.